Welcome, everyone. It's Frank, lesson number two. Today, we're going to talk about essentially reconnecting with the database, making sure the CRM and the email programs and the Facebook ads are all linked up. Today's been more of a technical discussion. And I put the agenda for what we're going to cover on this call today. I'm going to put it in the chat. There you go. Didn't really format very well, but at least it's something for us to guide us on uh, staying on topic for a discussion today. All right. But again, we have our clients here at Viral Marketing that are giving us money and want to get some results. Dallas and St Stacy, last week on the very first meeting, we talked about how to build your database correctly, how to prospect or advertise correctly to build your database of the right people. Now, everything in meeting one Viral Marketing does not do. We don't do anything in number one for you. We're all about, Viral's all about working the existing list. But the question that comes up all the time is I got to build a list. I got to put the right people on it. So you guys are in Utah. We came up with a message of a free pre-listing renovation improvement. Basically, you're going to go in and spend the money and get the contractors to fix the house up to list it or flip it, right? Right. And of all the medias to get that word out to the homeowners, you're going to choose direct mail. That's what you decided. This has worked well for you in the past. And when it comes to building the list... You know, we decided to go after single family homes that have been lived in for X amount of years around a certain price point that you're going to either pull from PropStream or Remine if you have access and you paid for it inside your MLS. Give us an update on your assignment from last week of getting the machine going to build the database of homeowners responding to you who might want to sell their house. All right. Yeah, yeah we went with Remine. We did actually buy into that. It was offered through our MLS. We put a list together. We're going to start a little bit smaller area and see how it goes. I believe we're just under 4,000 with the list we pulled. We focused on them owning the home three to 20 years, uh, 450,000 to 750,000 price range around where we live. And we've got um, the letter that you wrote for us here. Beautiful. So that's that's kind of in an email format. I want you to kind of miss we uh, change the cosmetics of it for a physical letter. Yeah, yeah. we're going. We're, we've already been working on that. We're, we're going to massage. Yeah, I've got that. scribbles yeah. all over this, so Good. we'll kind of <laughs> beautify it. Probably have you take a look at it for us before we send it out. And then we have actually a call right after this with our really good friend friend Emmy, who's with REI Print, and she's going to be sending out the letter for us. Perfect. Make sure you use a trackable number. Um, we have call rail that we beautiful. Use. Yeah. Call rail is great. Yeah. Great. Last time we, well, last time we did this, Frank, um, that number may have been flagged as spam. So we're going to take your advice and run it through, um, yeah, that service. I'll give everyone a little side tip. So we have a, at viral our, our, you know, the real estate agents who were answering our phone calls was low. I'm like what's going on? Is everyone really busy? I was like, well, I double check some stuff. There's this vendor I'll just put in the chat. Number verifier. We signed up for that and ran all our numbers through there. And it showed like it like showed you screenshots of how it showed up on all different cell phones. It was like spam likely or scam likely on the phone number. And I don't even think it was our phone number. It was the phone number that was assigned to us in the system from some some other bin. And that helped us fix that. So yeah, whenever you use a phone number for anything especially making outbound calls. You want to double check if it's been run through a robo call center first before you start using it. And the solution is just to change the number, find a different yeah, number. Or right? technically they call it remediate it. You remediate the number. Okay. You basically re-go re submit it to Verizon and whatever, and they fix it. And if they don't fix it, then you get a new one. That's the way it works on there. Cool. So you guys have a plan to build your database of the right prospect of exactly who you want. I haven't met strategy and effectively a 12 direct plan, like a, some type of monthly communication with your target list to get them to respond. They want to sell your home. You guys are good. Brian, I'm going to go to you. You're here because you want to recruit real estate agents. You're in Utah. We talked last week about building a list of all the licensed agents in the MLS, I would assume that you want to go after, um, whether it's by what brokerage they hold their license with, you can slice it by their production, how long they've hold their licenses. And we talked about different providers that you can use to get that information. What have you settled on of 
And then you're going to reach out to them, offering your book of scripts that are working for seller objections and ask them if they want it. And when they say, yes, I would love to see your book of scripts, Brian, you add that agent to your database. Yeah, we, built a, we built a list of about 22, a little over 2,200 that kind of fit the criteria that we, we felt like we wanted to go after. So we've got that list um, and we've got, uh, we put together the scripts as well. So that's in writing and, and we were going to do actually some videos, uh, you know, demonstrating the scripts as well as part of the offering. So we're not quite done with that, but almost done with it. Okay, good. Just make sure and, that you have and, a plan. And honestly, we started calling them as well last week. So good. Yeah. Cause you wanted to reach out your media. The way you're going to get the message out is it just text them, call them one to one saying, Hey, think, Brian, ask reach out. Yeah. Call. call and then social media. You know, a lot of these people see us on social media. Cool. Yep. Perfect. So I want you to have a plan to make sure that you can reach out to agents to get them to respond in your target market. So you're building the database of the right people. Yeah. Got it. Uh, we're going to talk today about having a separate CRM for that. So stay tuned. Okay. Julianne, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania is where you're out of. Um, we okay. work together outside of this. You've been a client for a while, getting good results. You wanted to send a letter. I helped you out. You mailed what? Um, some like 5,000 letters. Yep. Again, restate. And the offer on the letter was essentially, I have a buyer for your home because there's not much mm -hmm. for sale. And you do. You had what? How many buyers do you have right now that are looking for a house? Um, I put two under contract, so I have 58 now. But you do you do have 58 people that you're talking to that want to purchase a home in Gettysburg. Is that right? Yes. So you just send and, out a letter that says that and yeah. tell us about the response one more time of what you're getting from that. Okay. Well, I had, uh, now it's almost 325 people that have responded to the letter and I have four new listings that I'll be signing this week. Um, seems like everybody went on vacation last week, <laughs> yeah. which, yeah, you know, so I'm waiting for them to get back. Um, I have one seller that is, uh, this would be the fifth one that is preparing their property. The tenant just moved out and it needs a lot of work. Um, how many nurtures do you think you have of those, those 300 people that called? 35. How many of those did you, you have 35 legitimate ones you've scrubbed that you're going to add to your database? Yes. Perfect. And I haven't called all of those 300 people back. 325, Good. whatever that was. Yeah. Okay. So and then I have a listing that... appointment tonight. So. Good. Congratulations. So it worked well. Very good. Thank you. So, and you're, you're going to keep doing that. So I just wanted to recap on, we have a way to build the list. Okay. Yes. yes. Let's move into the lesson today. All right. We need to make sure that we have all of your lists on file at viral. So we can make sure that we do the marketing to all these nurtures and anyone else that you add to it. Okay. So Brian, I'm going to go back to you. Who's doing this for recruiting. You need a separate CRM where you're going to put all of your agent relationships. Do not put it in the CRM that you use for your buyer and seller leads for your real estate business. You technically could. It's really easy to mess up. I recommend a totally separate one. What CRM are you going to use? Um, I think we were going to, well, I don't know. We talked about Zoho. I think you mentioned that, mm -hmm. but we need, a, we need to pick one. Go pick one. Zoho, you have Zoho CRM. Okay. Again, I could not care less which one you pick. I'm only going to recommend the ones that I've used. It's worked well for me. You may not need all the features of Zoho CRM. It's kind of like Salesforce, 20 bucks a month per license. They have like an easier uh, one that's designed for small business called Zoho I Begin, I believe, B-I-G-I-N. Brian, why don't you go ahead and sign up for that? Okay. It's cheap. It's easy. Real simple. And it's a place where you put all of your agent relationships. Sound good? Okay. Stacy and Dallas, yep. what CRM are you guys going to pick? Where are you going to put, what are you, where are you going to put, where do all these <laughs> people go? Pick one. Oh man, you found my, my pain point in my business, a CRM. I have. Yeah. Welcome to everyone's. I have used so many and mm -hmm. I can't seem to find one that I like. It's a bit of a mess, uh, especially all the different times of transferring them. And right now we actually have two CRMs. We have one for buyer leads and that's mm -hmm. Chime. Yep. And then we have one for seller leads and that is Minute Pages. I like that. When I, when I, um, you really need like the advanced CRMs for buyer leads because you got to have the MLS integration, the property drips, and are they on the website? 
type stuff. But for seller leads, you don't need anything fancy. You just need a place to put them in follow-up. And are you cool with those? And so we need to link up both CRMs. We have two CRMs we want to link up because I do want to get those buyer leads as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Minute Pages is newer <laughs> learning it, but I think we'll have these leads go into Minute Pages. Perfect. Great. Julianne, uh, where are they all I going? Where are you putting them all? Follow-up boss. And Beautiful. And I don't, I don't know if anybody uses that or not, but it's, it's a great choice. Easy. I, I They're have all great everybody choices. in it. Yeah. What you're finding with CRMs, just so you know, is like the, 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 the aspects of differentiation are so small on them now. And one of the things you have to look out for in a CRM is featureitis, where they're constantly adding new stuff for the sake of having it new, but it makes it more complicated to use. So they kind of hit that point of diminishing marginal returns of like where the CRM is. So they start adding on like buyer seller lead generation, back end follow up to, to try to build around it with different suites of apps. So great. So now you have your CRMs. Okay. Great. So I need to get all the contact information out of those CRMs into a separate email marketing program. I do not want to send your emails to the CRM. It's not recommended. The CRM might be dripping out some of its own stuff, especially if it's a buyer lead generation CRM, like property updates, maybe some market updates, whatever it might be. Let that be. But when we're sending out your big blast emails for your 36 touch through viral, we're not going to send them to your CRM. We are actually going to use an email marketing program called My Emma. Just like Constant Contact, you know, uh, MailChimp, we just went in with Miami. So we got to make sure that all the emails that are in the CRM are inside Miami. So Stacey and Dallas, we're going to set you up with a Miami account for you guys. Okay. There's going to be no contacts in there. But we got to get the contacts from your CRM into Miami. So I want you to go into both your CRMs. This is one of your assignments today. And I want you to export everything into essentially you'll have two CSV files. And if you can suppress anyone who's unsubscribed or bounced in those exports, please do that. Don't send me anyone who's bounced or unsubscribed in the past. It's going to hurt our sending rate. And I want you to send those into a viral so I can get all the contacts out of your CRM. Sound good? Julianne, follow-up boss. You're going to log into follow-up boss. This is your assignment today. You're going to export everything. Just dump the whole thing, every field, everything you got, every column. All right. And uh, if you if you can inside that CRM, please leave out any unsubscribes or bounces. Fair enough. I believe. Um, Just call your follow up boss account manager, or yeah, we already I, we already we already, already, already have done that for you. I think we already have done that, so I'm good. good You're good to, to go. go on that. And they have a um, a link two way sync. It, yep. So Ooh, we're good. Good job, guys. Yeah. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. I'd like to hear that. All right. <laughs> I'm a little farther advanced, I think. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then Brian, um, you know, do you have a current, not the 2,600, 2,500 agents, do you have a list of agents you have an existing relationship with somewhere? Uh, yeah, we do. We have like a list of past deals that we've done. And Perfect. So the agents on their side, mm -hmm. where's that list? Um, in a spreadsheet. Great. Send the spreadsheet in. Hopefully it has first name, last name, and email, or at least yeah. just email. Yeah. Send that in. And we're going to have a separate Emma account for you, separate. So for the real estate professionals, we'll have one email account for consumers, buyers, sellers, best clients, sphere. And then we'll have a totally separate email account, a total separate account for agents, just like you have a total separate CRM for agents. And let's make sure that I have those on file. Okay. Got it? You're going to send those in. Now, hopefully you guys are going to continue to add people to your CRMs. How do I make sure that those contacts get over to the email marketing program? Well, normally you can do a manual export, but there's an easier way. Um, I'd like you guys to, to either sign up for RealSync, R-E-A-L-S-Y-N-C-H. Talk to my friend, Scott Solari, the CEO. He actually married my wife and I. Tell him you're a viral client, all right? And they, they're building the piping so to speak, with all the real estate CRMs, so they all talk to each other two-way. And you want to set up an integration. So when someone when you enter someone in your CRM or they go in your CRM, it pushes right to Emma. Now Zapier will do that. But what Real Sync can do is when someone clicks a link and when someone engages with the email, it'll push back a task for an ISA or a salesperson to call them in the CRM right on the record. So you have context. Do you guys catch that? The two-way. 
that's what makes real sync unique because one of the things we'll talk about is when you send these emails out and you say, Hey, click here to watch my video on how to sell your house. Yeah. You can go log in and pull the 30, 40, 50 people to click it. And then you have a spreadsheet with really any context of who they are. Right. Or if you have real sync set up when they click it, it goes right back into your stream, triggers a task right on the respective contact record. You guys catch that? That's awesome. Yeah. So that's a separate vendor. They're like duct tape for the internet. All right. Zapier will push it to Emma. So you'd go from your CRM to Emma and link it up. So whenever a new contact's created in your CRM, pushes to Emma. If you go for real sync, it'll do that. Plus it'll push the information back for a call. Got it? So go get that set up. And it sounds like Julianne, you already have that set up. Great. I just want to make sure that when you're adding people to your database, they're getting on your new marketing automatically. That's the goal. All right. Now, there's a second thing. There's a second way we can get the message out. Not only can we send an email out to your whole list through Emma, that's now being automatically updated because you have the middleware installed is what they call it. You have the middleware going back and forth between the two of the integration. But we also have Facebook and Instagram retargeting. We have all the retargeting we can do with the power of Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Okay which means that you all need a Facebook ad account. Now, do you have one? Brian, do you know if you have one or not? I, think I, so. should, yeah. I should know this. I would assume we do for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But make sure that you have an ad account. I need you to go log into it. Make sure your credit card's on there. Make sure your billing information is accurate. And Facebook might even ask you to provide like your business registration details. Like here's the articles of organization or whatever for your company or your driver's license. So you're not like some Russian hacker to verify who you are. So I do need you to take ownership of your Facebook ad account and make sure that you can log in there. You're the admin and all the information is set up correctly on it. Okay. And then it will give you an ad account ID. I need that. So viral marketing can request access to it. So we can go in there and manage your ads. Fair enough. Stacy and Dallas, do you guys have a Facebook ad account that you know about? Yes. Perfect. Go log in there. This is your next assignment. So you, we have exporting your lists, setting up the syncing, log in your Facebook ad account, make sure all of the um, contact information is updated and verified so you don't get shut down and flagged. Happens all the time. All right. And then we're going to need your Facebook ad account ID so we can go in and request access and you can give viral marketing access to the account so we can set up the ads. Okay. Yeah, I spent, I actually spent an hour with Bianca yesterday because I needed help. It's painful. It was like a mess. It's the worst. So, no, literally, it's the worst part of our whole business. I didn't know what I was doing. She helped <laughs> me through that. We got it done. We got it done. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you know, I I have to put a plug in here because I'm the same way as Stacy. I was just like, I don't have time for this. I, I understand it, but I don't want to. No, you do I. I mean, and it's terrible. So, it's like going to the grocery yeah. store and they rearrange it like every single time where your stuff is. It sounds like yeah, walking like, to Facebook. Why? It was everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Facebook. Why do we have to reorganize everything every single freaking time in Facebook? It's so stupid. Yeah, yeah. I kept, yeah, it kept, I kept getting like different errors and codes and I was like, I don't know. So she yeah. luckily spent an hour with me. She's amazing. And we got it done. Okay. On the Frank that's staff the is really good at that stuff. Let me tell you, they will take a lot off your plate. I, I you. couldn't function without them. Oh, definitely. She helped so much yesterday. I was going to pull my hair out <laughs> yeah, on my own. <laughs> yeah. It is a pain. So mm -hmm. let's just make sure that we have access to your ad account and you've logged in there and verified it. Okay. And then you can see it because you're giving Facebook permission to ding your credit card. You should have control over that. And then you invite viral marketing in. Okay. Next assignment. There's a whole list here. Just, we're just getting everything set up. Facebook page. Facebook page, Brian, my recommendation to you, you have a couple options for the page you want to run under your agent ads. I'm of the opinion it probably shouldn't be your brokerage. It should be you as a person. Think like Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry, person. Okay. And the brokerage is kind of the back end of it. It could be under your brokerage. That's fine too. You can go either way. But usually everyone asks me, Frank, pick. Double down on you as a person and lay off the brokerage and the messaging. Okay. Sound good? 
Yep. In your situation. So for example, your Facebook page would be like Brian Colmere is the Facebook page. And the okay. reason we want the page is because we can run ads on it. Got it? Yep. So there you go. There's your plan. Dallas and Stacy, what's your Facebook page that we're going to post all your stuff to? What's the name of it? It just says Stacy Chaffin dash easy offers Utah. So it has both, but it has That's a picture fine. of us on it. Great. Super happy with it. Viral marketing needs access. Okay. Okay. We're going to request access to it. You're going to do it. And Julianne, I'm sure we have yours. What's the name of your <clears throat> Facebook page? Uh, well, I actually have three, but the one I think that um, Morgan and Adriana are using is Julianne Lesniak. That's fine. Great. Mm -hmm. Check yeah. with your board if you have to put your real estate number yeah. in the title of Facebook to stay compliant, depending on if they're going to yell at you or not. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And we need access to that. And then what you want to do, and you have to do this on your own, is link that page to your Instagram. You have to go in and link that page to your Instagram. That's something that's you have to do. That's already done. Perfect. That's already done. All okay. three of my pages are linked. So, yeah. So these are all the little things I asked when a client comes to me and says, Frank, I'm not seeing results. Well, we got to go through, we got to audit everything, make sure we're all checked up. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Now it gets a little more exciting. So now inside your Facebook ad account, you can create some lists, some audiences is what they call it. Just think of it as a mailing list. Facebook calls it an audience. There's three we're going to need your help setting up, which is going to be um, one of you, another one of your assignments to just get the plumbing and the infrastructure correct of your lists to make sure you have your database on file. The first, all those people that you have in your Emma account or your CRM, we want to upload that list to Facebook. We'll match first name, last name, phone number, email. And if somebody on Facebook has used that contact information, we can run ads to them. Got it? So not only are we going to take everyone in your CRM and put it into an email marketing program to send them emails, we're going to upload it to Facebook and run ads to them. So we have two medias to get the message out to them. Got it? Second, inside your Facebook ad account, you have the opportunity to create or you already have what's called a meta pixel. It's a piece of code that on whatever website you put it on, you can stalk all the visitors over the past year that have been to that website all over the internet, okay? We need to make sure, and when you talk to Viral here, again, this is a very technical discussion today of setting up the infrastructure, that you guys probably have your main website or websites, certainly have your Viral blog, but then you have maybe other websites that you have. We want to make sure that that pixel is on all those websites. So the second audience we can put into Facebook is everyone who's ever visited any of your websites. So now we can get a message in front of everyone in your CRM and social media, and we can get a message to anyone that's ever been to one of your websites. A cool little tool that you can use it, to know if that pixel is installed, there's a Chrome add-in called the Facebook Pixel Helper. I'm gonna show it to you really quick on my screen. So do you see this little thing right here? The Metapixel Helper? Just go download this Chrome add-in. And apparently I have four different pixels on my website. But it will tell you if it's installed and what the pixel ID. Do you see where it says pixel ID? You want to make sure that ID, first off, this is on all your websites. And it's the same pixel ID in all your websites. And that pixel ID matches the one inside your ad account. Now, I know that sounds a little bit complicated, but here's what happens. You hire all these vendors to do social media for you, and they go through their pixel on all your websites under their pixel ID and their ad account. So you think it's installed, but it's really not because it's going to someone else's ad account. Do you guys catch me on this? Yeah. So this is a little audit of like, hey, are we retargeting? You might think you are, but all that data is going to someone else's ad account for an old, old, an old marketing company you hired. <laughs> okay. So let's just make sure that we install the Metapixel on all your websites. You're going to have to work with your web partners to do that. And just make sure that that ID is the one that matches the one in your ad account. And that way, all that data is going into your actual ad account. How do we download the plugin? Just go to type in Google Chrome, uh, just type in Meta Metapixel Helper on Google, and then it'll tell you. All right. Pro tip. You guys ready for a little side tip? We're going to talk about this in lesson eight. Call up your mortgage company, 
say you're putting this pixel on your website. Call up the credit repair. <laughs> you're putting this pixel on your website. Call um, anyone that has an audience of like home services and uh, kind of make an offer they can't refuse to put your pixel on their website and you can retarget all their traffic too. You guys like that? Frank, you're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> can you Pro say tip. that one more time, Frank? One more time, sorry. So that pixel goes on your website, right? And you can retarget yeah. everyone that's been on your website, but I don't know. Is your mortgage company attracting a bunch of buyer traffic? Is a credit repair company attracting a bunch of like, I need to try to buy a house? Uh, is a property management company attracting a bunch of landlords? Um, is a financial planner attracting a bunch of people that need to sell and they don't know what to do with all their money? Yeah. Call them up. Hey, bro. Put this on your website. Mr. Frank, is are those companies allowed to have multiple metapixels on yes. one website? Mm-hmm. So they can so keep the current any- one, just add yours too. As you can see, I have four on mine because they might all be mine, or maybe I did an, I did an, a pixel share with someone else back in the day to try. Well, you're an internet you're an internet slut is basically what we're trying to say. <laughs> I guess that's one way of saying it. Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's that's just a pro tip. All right. So that's a, just so I want you to start thinking about. Not yet, but you know we're going to maximize your database. But understand, other companies have databases too. Other companies have audience traffic, Facebook fans and databases. And how can we get in front of those? We'll talk about that in lesson eight. I'm just giving you a preview of what that's like. Yeah, I have so many vendors coming at me all the time wanting to partner. Be, Great. Be put, my partner, partner, yeah, put my pixel on your site. Put my pixel on your site. Let's see what you can all do. Of them now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, this, is, this might sound a really kind of odd, but I'm getting a tremendous amount of funeral homes calling me and I'm like, what? And they want me to, you know, partner up with them and and for free because people die and their heirs don't know what to do with the houses. I have a joke for you, Julianne. I know. it's Everyone's a prospect. (laughs) (laughs) It's like an ambulance case though. Good God. Yeah. Yeah, Get everyone to start prepaying their funeral when they buy a house. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just bizarre. Yeah. So, all right. So just again, do you see how this is like technical crap that if we actually spend our time up front doing this, it scales and it's built up and it allows you to get the reach that you need. So we're not running into a brick wall every time we're trying to market to your database because I don't have a list on file. Okay. So the first list we talked about in Facebook ads is your uploading your database. The second list is getting the Facebook pixel traffic setting that up inside of your ad account. There's a third one. And this, this is the easiest one. This is everyone who's interacted with you online on social media. If they have liked your post, shared it, watched a video, commented, you can retarget people that have ever interacted with your existence on social media. So let's get a third audience set up. Use my team here at Viral. They're watching these videos. They know what we're talking about. Our whole company watches these. Let's get that third audience set up inside your Facebook ad account of everyone that's ever interacted with you on social media so you can stalk them all over online as well. So now think about it. Let's say we come up with a message, whatever it is. We can email it out. Awesome. But we can also post it on Facebook and boost it. And who's it go to? Everybody in your database? Everybody from your website traffic or anyone else's? And anyone's ever interacted with you on social media. Frank, I have a question. Um, Mm -hmm. Has has Adriana and Morgan already done this for me? I I don't know. I haven't haven't checked. I would assume so. Okay. I mean, this is a part part of our process. The only reason we probably don't is Facebook was giving us a hard time and we have to get on a call with you and verify it. And we get some two-step authentication code and then everyone just kind of forgets about it because it's just a pain. It is a lot of, it is not fun setting this up. But once it's set up, yeah. you're good. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to keep going here. Make sure you're keeping a good list of what we got to do. Now, remember how your CRM syncs to your email marketing program? Remember how we set up that middleware integration? We talked about once you do that. You can also set it up. So whenever a new contact is added to your CRM, it syncs to your Facebook custom audience. Zapier will do that. 
you're going to go into Zapier and create a second Zap. Whenever a new contact is added or updated in your CRM, it syncs to your Facebook database. Now think of the power of this. You're building your database of the right people, right? Which is like really important. That was lesson one. And these people are permission-based going into your CRM. Well, the second they go on your CRM or you update their contact information, they are pushed over the email marketing program and pushed over to Facebook automatically, getting the 36 touch, getting the marketing information, getting the retargeting. You guys hanging in there? I like it a lot. All right. Frank, Frank does Gabby help with that? Yes. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Let, okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm throwing her under the bus, but lesson Gabby's, one Gabby's viral fantastic. will not help you. Okay. <laughs> Lessons two through eight viral does everything I say here. Got it? Everything. I'm really excited. <laughs> A lot of it is just paying for an appointment with us to like sit down and do it because it's so painful. Yeah. I'll schedule a call. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I get my hair cut and like, it's cheaper to go into the ones where you don't take appointments where you sit there like a DMV waiting to get your hair done. So I'll go pay three times the amount just so I have the appointment and not have to sit in the DMV of the super cuts. <laughs> Fortunate to be able to do that. All right. Anyways, let's keep going on. So do, 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 do. Okay. Now, let's say that we send an email out through your Emma email marketing program, right? Your constant contact, MailChimp, whatever. There's a good chance that, you know, in Gmail where it says like, this might be spam or spoofing mm -hmm. happens all the time because I can go into that email marketing program and choose any name I want to send it from. Honestly, I can choose any domain, any name I can spoof. I could be the president of the United States and send an email out with a fake return address. You can do that. You can send the email from whoever you want, just like you can write the return address from whoever you want on a letter. Okay. So how does my Emma or your email marketing program know it's actually you? Well, it's, it's two things we set up. And I just want you to make sure we did it for you at viral because we need you to work with us because you're, we have to, we have to authenticate your domain. So Brian, when we send your emails, what's, what's your Brian at whatever.com? What is it? Uh, Brian, currently it's Brian at realty.com, but I think we got the .net domain as well for that. Sounds great. So whatever one you want to use, all right, the .com, where is it hosted? Uh, with Google. Google. Okay, great. So we're going to have to go into Google and the DNS records, and we're going to have to set up, are you ready? SPF and DKIM inside the records on your domain and match it with, with Miama. It's going to dramatically improve the likelihood of your emails going into primary inbox, not flagged. Huge tip. Dallas and Stacy, what's the domain you're gonna be sending from? Uh, easy email? Offers Utah. Okay, so Easy, easy offers, offers Utah. Utah. Who, where did you buy the domain from? Uh, GoDaddy. Great, you're gonna log in, you're gonna give us, you're gonna work with us in your GoDaddy login. And we have to set up like a C name or a text record inside the DNS records to authenticate that domain with Emma, and it's called SPF, and it's called DKIM. You can Google it. And it's going to dramatically improve your email deliverability rates. So you don't get flagged as spoofing, and they don't go in the, in the spam inbox. These are little details that if we set up now, you will make more money. <laughs> All right? Julianne, same thing with you. There's a probability that we didn't get it done because it's hard and takes time and we have to log in and how we get there. When I email you, what's your domain? Lesbiantgroup.com. Perfect. Where's it hosted? GoDaddy. Make sure we have your DKIM and SPF yeah. set up. We're going to log into GoDaddy and do some intricate DNS record syncing. Sound okay. good? Yeah. Perfect. All Frank, right. Yeah. Frank. I, I have no idea how to do that. So dude, this is why you pay us. Will... Yes. Okay. All right. All this right. is that why you give us sense. money. It's why I have, I'm, it's like, why I'm able to make a living and pay my mortgage head. and how I how I play capitalism. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> it's it's over most people's heads. Um, I'm very technically oriented, but I don't have time for it and I don't and really want to do it. Exactly. And if 
you know, anybody in Frank's office can do it. Pay them. Okay, yeah, great. Thank you. <laughs> so just yeah, get or, an or, or look, you can go time. look at the help files and figure this stuff out yourself. I mean, it, I don't want to do that. The idea here is like, I want to give you guys the strategy. I want to train you so you know what you're doing. So you have an intelligent conversation with our team. And then also our team and our people know what to do so they can have an intelligent conversation with you around a, a framework, which is what we're doing on these meetings. All right. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Okay. So contact goes in CRM, right over to Emma, right over to Facebook retargeting audience. Beautiful. And then if you got real sync, someone clicks a link in an email, right back to the CRM for a call for a follow-up for appointments. Got it. All right. Now, not only do I want your CRM on file, okay? So let's talk about a little more detail. The first time that we export, when we export all these contacts from your CRM the first time, so we're gonna do a big dump export, import them, and then we'll set up the integrations going forward for all the new contacts that come in. We never want to send an email out, I'm just letting you guys know this, to a big CRM dump. Because if we try to load that into an email marketing program, it's just going to get flagged left and right of like all these bad email addresses. Got it. So one of the things that we pay for, which means you pay for it, is a service called NeverBounce. We're going to scrub all of your CRM contacts through a service called NeverBounce before we load them into your email marketing program. This is what we use. These are little things of like getting your emails in the inbox, right? Little detail. So when we export your CRM, we're gonna clean up all those emails and we're gonna upload them here. And then we're gonna download your clean list and you're good to go. So we're gonna make sure that all of your contacts in your CRM are scrubbed through Neverbounce and then they go into Emma little tip. Okay. Now, then you'll have the integration set up, but there's a couple other lists I want on file in your, in your email marketing program. You guys ready? So yes, I want you to export your CRM and get the sync set up that will scrub. But I'm going to add a couple more. Dallas and Stacy, I want you to go into your Google contacts. I'm going to show you exactly what I want you to do. Do you guys use Gmail? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, log into your Gmail. All right. And then um, I want you to type in, um, con I believe it's contacts.google.com. Let me see if mine will load. Mine's not loading. Can you guys still hear me? Am I connected to the internet? Yes. We can hear you. <gasps> Is Google down? No. All right. So here we go. So do you see how I am at contacts.google.com? And you guys can all follow along with me. This is like anyone you've ever communicated with your entire life. Think of this is like your sphere, your contacts. You have your CRM as a list, right? For at least for consumers, for listings. All right. But go into your Google contacts. I want you to scroll down here all the way to the bottom. I'm going to make my window a little bigger. Oh, I'm sorry. It's up here now. You changed it. Thank you, grocery store. Do you see where it says other contacts? I want you to click that, okay? Other contacts, all right? And then I want you to click the very first option. Click the very first one, all right? And then this little down button here, I want you to click select all. Do you see I have 14,000 people in my Google contacts? Do you think we might wanna get them a message as well? Mm hmm. So what you're going to do is once you select all those contacts, there's an option over here to click export. Send them in. We're going to run them through Never Bounce and put them into your Emma email marketing program and put them as a Facebook custom audience. So they all see your ads. How do you guys feel about that? Think it'll make you some money if we did it in a tactful, correct, non-spammy way? Yes. 
Yeah. And sorry, Frank, so, so other contacts. Mm -hmm. I'll do it one more time. Other contacts. Select the first contact. Click the little down button and select all. How many came back for you, Dallas? Oh, now it's 16,000. <laughs> okay. Right? At the next port and send those into me. Now, real sync, just so you know, big, I helped them put it together. Um, we'll also set up integration from your Google contacts into my Emma. So whenever you create a new Google contact, it'll sync to your Emma account. Am I changing kind of the way you think here of like, man, we got to really get this data into the right systems, scrubbed and deduplicated and optimized. So when I do have a message, I click that button. Everyone sees it. Who should see it? All right. I think I'm in my hotel room. Almost done, but one more hour. I'm all good. Housekeeping. All right. So um, let's do that. Okay. There's another thing I want you guys to do. Pull out your cell phones. Pull them out. Go to the app store. And I want you to download uh, export contacts by Covey. I believe it's called this. You guys can still hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. I want you to download this tool. It makes things easy. If you don't have an iPhone, there's probably a Android alternative. Right now, pull it up on your phones. Do I have my phone on me? No, I don't. Let me know when you have it installed. Good, great, install it. If it's five bucks, pay it. Sorry, you're spending money today. <laughs> Get it. Be one of the best uh, returns on investment you can do. So not only are we exporting all the contacts from your CRM, scrubbing them and syncing it up going forward, but we're exporting all the contacts from your Google contacts. Now, Brian, you don't have to do this because you're going after agents, I'm sorry. So Brian, just it's nice for you to see this, but we don't need to put everybody in your Google contacts and your cell phone on real estate agent updates, okay? Yeah. I don't think it'd be a terrible idea. You know, well, there's, probably, mean, way we, we, uh, there's a probably a way we can massage that with like a real estate scholarship, help you get into the business type of message. But yeah. you can skip this because your list is much more niche. But this is for Stacey Dallas, Julianne, for consumers. Since you have a very wide appeal message that probably appeals to everyone, this would make sense. But anyways, play along. So install it, set it up. How many contacts in your cell phone? What's the result it gives you when you follow the instructions? 647. Beautiful. Export it. Send it in. Stacy, how many do you get? I have 995. Great. Export it. Send it in. <laughs> I had 1258. 1258. Great. Export it. Mm -hmm. Send it in. Already done. And what we're going to do is we're going to run it through Never Bounce. And okay. then we're going to go and put it into your email marketing program. Okay. So we're sending this to our reps yeah. at Viral? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Got it. Perfect. Already okay. done. So now let's think about this. You have a strategy to build your database of the right contact, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're getting them all in a CRM. We've exported the CRM, synced it up to email marketing program, and we threw your Gmail and your cell phone contacts and the email marketing program too. And remember, it will automatically deduplicate by email address when you do that. So you don't have to worry about dupes. Dude. You are going to have everyone in your entire life optimized to receive your messages. Who's excited? Me. <laughs> Me. Good. Frank, uh, I, I don't know what lives in your brain, but it's a whole different level. It is, you're a freaking genius. No, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's like, I hate oh prospecting God. so much. <laughs> I hate being the pest. I'd rather be the guest. <laughs> Sounds like a Disney movie or something. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, yeah, we should see little. I abhor prospecting. Like if you <laughs> ask me to like prove myself to a stranger. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like I don't, I want everyone, you call me. 
Like I don't want to have to do up on calls. I'm not, I just, I just, I just, I hate it viscerally. So <laughs> I started it every time. I'm with you. I hate it. Too. it. You know, it's funny. In my marriage, I talked to my wife and I have money set aside for a marketing budget. It's like more important to me than my emergency savings. Cause I'm like, if we don't have a marketing budget, I have to go knock on doors and make cold calls. And it is never happening. Like I protect my marketing budget to make that phone ring. Like, like a moat to keep things coming in because that marketing budget goes away. If that savings goes away, you're, you're just doomed to like selling time to get business. Right. And we've all been there, but once you have a taste where you don't have to sell your time to get the business anymore like this, it's like the most freeing thing. Ever. I mean, Julian, just honestly, like on a little sidetrack, I mean, how freeing, how did you feel when your phone just blew up all these people calling you who actually wanted to sell? Well, I was a little scared at first because I was like, oh my God, I didn't really, I didn't realize a simple letter could do that. You know, I mean, lately everything has just been online, you know, call, email, text, and a little bit of it is old school with a letter. I, I'm not kidding you. It was just brilliant. Yeah. You didn't have to make the calls. You didn't have to go knock on any doors. You didn't have nope. to go sell they your time. Me. You didn't have to prove yourself to a stranger. It's one of the best feelings ever. I and, love it. And I high. loved it because it was like, hi, I'm, you know, so-and-so seller. Can you come list my house? Y oh. Yeah. Great. Would today at four be fine? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what you guys are going to do. That's the, that's the result we're going here for, right? That's why we're doing marketing advertising. Now yeah. we're going to keep going. So now would you say that inside your Facebook ad account, we're going to put those lists too. So in your Facebook ad account, we have everybody, right? And it's synced up to get the new people. And inside your email marketing program, we have everybody scrubbed, deduplicated, synced up to get the new people. Okay. There's one more list I want. There's one more list on the viral program. So we're going to hit them with Facebook ads and Instagram ads and email. Can I tell you something? It's not that great. It's not that great. You'll be lucky if 30% of your database even opens your email. That means 70% won't. Yeah. Do you trust the Facebook algorithm to actually serve up your ad? Mm -mm. Where they're paying attention in one of the most crowded spaces in the world? of ads on social media? Mm, I don't know, right? Do you know how I can guarantee, darn near guarantee, that your message gets delivered to the right person? And if it doesn't, it's in your hands and you know if it, if it didn't, is mail. So there's a third list I want you guys to think about. I want you to think about a mailing list who's going to get a monthly letter. So we're going to take <clears throat> whatever you, whatever messages we put out in your emails and on social media, we're going to kind of create a monthly summary of it. And we're going to print it on a piece of paper and use a letter to put that in front of your most valuable contacts. So what are your most valuable contacts? Well, I'd probably say anyone, if you probably saw them at a restaurant, you go say hi. Technically, it's called Dunbar's number. If you Google Dunbar's number, the number of relationships any human can probably hold is about 150. You probably come up with 150 people that you probably say hi if you walked up to them. Hopefully, I'm one if you saw me at a restaurant. All right. But I want you to create a Google spreadsheet first name, last name, street address, city state zip. Not that exciting, right? And start building your mailing list. All those seller nurtures you have, Julianne, are you going to trust email and a Facebook ad to be in front of those people? Really? No joke. Are you going to trust they're going to get the email? Are you going to trust they're going to see a Facebook ad so you stay top of mind? No, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So I you mean, have 30, my, you have, my you database have 30... is pretty good. It tells me when they have opened an email, but you know. But it's still the percentage is low. It, it's, it's very low. Yeah. I want a hundred percent certainty those 30 nurtures are seeing you, right? And you have their address, right? Put them on your spreadsheet, okay? Make a Google spreadsheet of your most valuable nurturers, your most valuable past clients, your most valuable sphere, 
So they get a monthly physical letter for you, which can just essentially be a summary. We do this for you at Viral. We will do this. A summary of what you posted online because you cannot trust digital. It is not that great. I'm, and I'm the CEO of Viral Marketing telling you this. <laughs> All right. Right. So that's the next thing I want you to do. So there's just a lot of infrastructure we have to set up today. All right. So here's the deal. You're going to be making a video. You're going to come up with a message. Great. We're going to email it out to everyone that's constantly synced and updated. We're going to post it on social media and boost it for a couple bucks that's constantly synced and updated. And we'll put it on a piece of paper and we'll mail it to your best, best, best contacts, which is going to cost you about a dollar a letter. So Ask yourself, would you spend a dollar to get your message in front of this person? For those seller nurtures, 100%. Right, Julian? Yeah, 100%. It'd be foolish not to. Brian, for your recruiting, let's adjust this for your recruiting. All I want you to do is just get your email marketing program set up with all the agents that you know. Okay. Put those in the email account. Do not, listen to me clearly, do not put all of the agents from the MLS in your email marketing account. I mean, literally our email service provider, like that is that they hate it when other, when people do that, they will literally come and call and yell at you and it's flagged. Okay. Yeah. What you can do is you could take all of those agents and upload them to Facebook to retarget them. You are allowed to do that. You can okay. upload it to Facebook. Okay. But the can, only can I ask agents, you a question? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Sorry. the only agents I want in your email marketing program are the ones you have a pre-existing relationship with. Okay. So, Question so what, what you're teaching here is like super valuable. Like we're going to go back to our, our existing agents and teach them as well. Why not like offer this as a class two? Oh, you know what I mean? Along Brian, because the... that would be too logical. Oh, okay. <laughs> that would make too much sense. <laughs> you know, it's much easier. I can go on a whole rant with this. But when you have a body count brokerage model, do you have a pulse? Great. Come on in. Here's a script. Here's a phone. Start cold calling. And start beating up your friends and family. Um, this would overwhelm 99% of the industry we're talking about. This is way too complicated to be able to build a brokerage. Like on a 1099 model, you can do that, you know? And you're probably going to see less of that with all the TCPA cold calling lawsuits that a lot of brokerages are going to have to figure out. I got to go more inbound marketing and it's going to thin the herd because this is, this is how it's done, but it's a complicated process that you really have to know. It's harder, right, Brian? I mean, think about it, yeah. man. Like, isn't yeah. it easier to bring in a bunch of agents and give them a phone and a script and say, dial the numbers, yeah. make a hundred calls a day. Yep. Like you can, you can franchise that. You can scale that. You can build that. But to do this, you really got to get this down. I would tell you that if you're bringing in a new agent to your brokerage, have them take this course. Say, why should I come work for you, Brian? Well, we're going to help you get business from your database. Well, you're just going to have me cold call him? Mm, no. Watch these eight lessons. And when they watch that, I think they'll it'll really open their mind to some of the value that you can provide. Okay. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. Those are my thoughts. All right. Okay. What else do we got? Um, let's do, let's go through our agenda for today. Everyone's in your CRM. What CRM are you putting it into? Real Sync, Zapier, Facebook, My Emma, Facebook page, website retargeting, exporting your databases, physical mailing list. Ah, okay. All right. So now everything's set up. We have all the plumbing set up so I can fulfill the mission of today's meeting. Do I have all your latest lists on file in your email account, ready for mail and in your Facebook retargeting account? Yes. And for you, Brian, we adjusted it for agent recruiting. Okay. Now we have to get a reconnect message out. This is, this is kind of why the bill process is so expensive. It's why we charge the two grand because we take you through all this to get this done. But now it's like, okay, Frank, I did all this. Now what? Well, we send a reconnect message. Let me give you what this message looks like that maybe you would post on social media and this email that would come from you out to all of these people, which is terrifying, right? 
you kind of have to be a crazy person to do this. <laughs> Can we be clear? And Brian, think about it. When you go to your regular agent that doesn't really have a background in direct marketing or sales and really doesn't have a background and isn't an entrepreneur and isn't comfortable with risk and is very afraid of rejection. Do you think someone who doesn't have a background in sales, that's afraid of rejection, that isn't an entrepreneur, is going to export all their Gmail contacts, everyone their cell phone, everyone the CRM, get themselves on camera and send it out? No, that's a hard sell. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. Again, it would be the rational, logical, highest money-making activity without question. But it's too emotional. It's too emotional. So I want to address the emotion of what I'm asking you to do. It's very real. All right. So let's go through that message. This is what it's going to sound like. Julian, we've already done this for you. Brian, we've done this for you. I'm going to customize this message. This is being recorded. They'll be done with the meeting today. Okay. So we'll use this as the framework to write the message. So Stacy and Dallas, here we go. We're going to write yours. Excited to reconnect with you as a subject line. Friends, family, clients. Hey, it's Stacy and Dallas. Wanted to say hi. We're still selling real estate. And if you're getting this message, it's because we've done a deal together. We're friends and we're connected on social media in some way. I just want to let you know that the market is unthawed. Things are happening in the Utah real estate market. And I know yeah, they're coming out the ice steps of last year. You know, things are good here this summer. And here's some stats to back it up. And the reason I write you is because what you hear in the national news isn't necessarily what's going on right here locally in, say, South Jordan or Utah or whatever. All right. And we want to keep you updated answering your most commonly asked questions that we're hearing from buyers and sellers and homeowners every day about their home values and what's going on at the real estate market. So we started this brand new video blog. You check out our first video, soon to be posted here on whatever topic. Hope you enjoy, want to keep you educated. But with that, if you are actually thinking of selling your house, um, we can help you. One, you can click here and maybe find out what your home is worth if you're curious to know what it would actually sell for what we listed for. Or two, if your home might be a bit dated or damaged and you want to bring it up to full market value, you can click here and request a pre-listing improvement consultation. We'll actually come with all the contractors and fix everything up so you get like a really high return on investment on your home remodeling jobs. And we know which remodeling jobs the buyers want, all right? All right. And then if you have any questions, let me know. Just reply back to this email. We're happy to talk to you about anything when it comes to buying, selling, or even investing in real estate. You know, we have 22 doors, so we know about the game of buying, uh, investing in real estate. Look forward to staying in touch. You'll get some future videos shortly. And if you don't want to hear from me, click unsubscribe here at the bottom. And because I know this email is out of the blue and you won't hear from me ever again. Thanks for reading. How do you guys feel with a message that comes across that way that's typed up out to your database? Yeah. I think it feels genuine. And you just said it, you know. Mm -hmm. So you would take that, you would write up in the first person. Send it. Have fun. You're going to get some responses, good and bad. <laughs> All right. Brian, let's write yours. How long have you been selling real estate? Mm, 16 years. How many deals do you do a year? 40. 40. Okay. Subject line. Um, I wonder if you can write this. I'm thinking like helpful, no BS real estate training. <laughs> be the subject line sounds good to me yeah. helpful no bs real estate training fellow real estate agents friends it's brian you know we're or you what were you by asked you for I, we have an office down here by the whatever sandy expo center yeah we have an office down here by the sandy expo center i've been in this game for 16 years selling real estate you know doing a good 40 solid deals a year making a healthy living for ourselves but we're talking to buyers and sellers all the time and we are really struggling with the objections the concerns that they were giving to us and um, I just wanted to write you because I put together a book of scripts of everything that we're using in our office to answer the most commonly asked questions. We're getting on listing presentations and buyer conversion calls and contracts and offers given the whole wacky market that we're in. And I want to give it to you totally for free. And the reason I'm writing is because we've done a deal together where we have an existing relationship. And if you'd like to get that book of scripts, click here, put your information, it's yours for free. With that, I started a real estate agent training blog. I'm answering the most commonly asked questions that our agents asked us to actually make a living, you know, and um, those same answers I give to our agents, I'm going to put on the blog as a video for you so you can watch them too. And actually my first video is on 
Uh, what CRMs did you choose? What's the best CRM? There you go. And you can click here and watch it. So anyways, I look forward to building a relationship either to reduce the friction. They might be negotiating with each other on some deal someday. I'm a good person. I hope you can maybe figure that out through my content. If you don't want to ever hear from me because you're getting beat up by too many coaches and trainers and gurus, I get it. Just click on subscribe. But the content I will send you will be specific here to Utah of what we're dealing with versus maybe some of the national stuff the gurus send you. Just want to help you out. Anyways, look forward to staying in touch. If you, need, if you ever want to talk about growing your business or you'd like to meet with the one-on-one for a coffee or whatever, and maybe I can help you personalize a business plan for your goals, maybe what you would implement here if you were to come work for us, which isn't the intent, hit me up. Here's my email. Here's my cell. Happy to help you, Brian. How does that sound? Sounds awesome. Sounds great. Yeah. That's your message. That's what I want you to send out to all of those agents sitting in that list. And Julianne, we already did yours, but yours would be somewhat just like Stacy and Dallas's. The the list that we that you said to the warm the, list of the agents. Warm list. Okay. The, the agents right. that you know on the okay. other side of the transaction that okay. would have positive vibes, hopefully. Yeah, we, we know one in the front line. Yeah, there's a relationship or we cross paths. Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. So lesson one, we audited. Are you building the database and do we have a plan for that? Okay. Lesson two is technical. Do I have all of your lists on file, scrubbed, where they're supposed to be, deduplicated, ideally going forward, synced up. So when you add someone new to your database, it gets on the marketing, right? And then if it's the first time you're doing that, let's send out a reconnect message to the whole list to kind of set it up for success. Got it. So instead of just like hitting them with this random video, let's get that first message out to the big list with a reconnect message that we went through today. And now we'll make sure that we have all of your infrastructure in place for a really good 36 touch. There's no reason why any business or professional service probably wouldn't do this. If you can think about it, right? It just requires some guidance and it's a little bit more complicated. So Q&A, Stacey and Dallas, what do you guys need to know to be able to execute your assignments for today? So a lot of those contacts are other agents. Great. And does that matter? <laughs> no, I love it. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to find a lot of agents watching this stuff because they're jealous. So like, what are Stacey and Dallas up to making all these videos, doing all this marketing, you know, while they're sitting in their office, they're deserted office, but that no one's at with no guidance from their broker or anyone trying to figure out where the next commission check's coming from. And they see you guys crushing it, or at least the perception that you are. They're going to click it and they're going to watch it. When you find an agent who's engaging with your material just on the consumer side, that's a recruiting phone call. Come on over here. We'll throw you in the videos and we'll do this with you. Sign me up. So one of the first places, by the way, I should probably bring this up, Brian. This is good you guys asked that. <clears throat> on your consumer marketing, if you're looking to recruit, <clears throat> find out what agents are taking out of the time of their day to watch your stuff. Follow me. There's a level of envy there. Does that answer your question, Stacey? Yeah, no, that definitely did. That's 100%. Good. Yeah. Dallas, any questions about what you got to do to execute this? Today? Again, our staff watches this and we'll do a great job helping you out. Yeah, it's just a it's just a matter of buckling down and and getting this focus. all set up. Yep, yeah, focus while we have five listings at the moment. <laughs> Get on a call with us. We'll walk you through step by step. Got it, Julianne. Maybe you picked up a few things we had we didn't do for you in the build process. A few detail that we can double check as Absolutely. we audit everything you're doing with you. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, no, but I'm I'm already going to be connecting with Gabby. She mentioned me in the, in the chat. <laughs> Good. Perfect. All right. Gabby's wonderful. <laughs> and then Brian, how are you doing? We want to recruit agents. What yep. questions do you have to make sure that we have all of your database on file, ready to start receiving the, the retargeting marketing and the email marketing of your existing kind of met agents? Uh, I got three pages of notes and we'll look at this replay as soon as you send it. So cool. All right, guys. So you have your assignments to get the kind of the plumbing and the infrastructure set up. A lot of this we go through in the build process for you. Last but not least, I know we're a little bit over. I apologize, guys. Thanks for um, sticking around for five more minutes. 
next week, where I believe we meet on next week is not on a Thursday. We're going to meet next week on, wait, no, it is Thursday. We'll meet next Thursday, the 27th. I'll send you guys a meeting request. And then just so you know, next week, what we're going to talk about and we'll wrap up for today. Um, Step number three, what's class three? Okay, we're going to talk about your two helpful videos a month. Let's get out two helpful videos a month. Real good ones, Q&As, out to the whole list. Post it on social media so people spend time with you online and get to know you. We're going to go really deep on what's the most relevant, best way, what are the best topic scripts, how to shoot it, how to make it like the most painless possible for the most effect. That's it. We're all done. Thank you, Frank. Good. Easy peasy, right? I guess. Because <laughs> I, I have to execute. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting when when you do the two videos uh, a month, most people don't like to get on video. They they don't like the way they sound. They don't like the way they look. They're they're stumble over their words. Let me tell you, I've struggled with that for years until I met my two reps at Viral. Let me tell you, they make you feel so comfortable. They edit everything. They make you look like a million bucks and sound great. I, I can't. I can't do this on my own. I, it's amazing. Cool. And and yeah. you get a lot better at it. So that, you like, do. If you look yeah, at our first videos like six years ago to what yeah. we're doing now, you know, it's a lot yeah. different. Yeah, you, it's it's almost like you you get very comfortable, but you you lose that fear of talking to a camera. Yeah. You know, because there's nobody else here. You know, th- this is my home. This is my home office. And as you can see, I've got my two up dogs over here. Um, and they they make me move different ways so that they can't see the dogs. They stage me behind. They tell me how to do everything. It's really easy. One of the so things you guys can work it. on when you do your Zooms. So this is my phone yeah. on a tripod. So during yeah. this, this recorded the full hour in like 4K, oh, cool. beautiful resolution. One of the things you guys can do is just go take your phone and turn it on and set it right behind the Zoom, behind your screen when you're on Zoom, because the Zoom quality isn't that great, right? Yeah. But I also have 4K for my iPhone sitting right behind here. So we'll send in the recording of this whole hour with the footage from the phone. And you can make beautiful videos and shorts out of yeah. it and cut it up a gazillion ways. And we can talk a little bit more in the course. But anyways, we got to go. We can sit here all day long. We're 10 minutes over. Thanks. Next week. Bye. Thanks, Thanks Brad. Later.